Welcome to St. Patrick's. Please stand as we begin Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and save us from everlasting, everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all of her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, and the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. He is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock, In his arms he gathers the lambs, carrying them in in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Let 
Justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire? But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of the one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. So I'm sitting over there, and uh, we've got some beautiful readings. I'm listening to it, but then I'm looking, and I'm like, who was supposed to light those candles? Was that my job? <laughs> who was, was this me? I had one job, to come light the candles. I, I didn't do it, so I gotta light the candles. Now we can begin. I, if that's what it takes to get la uh, clapping here, you got to raise your bar a little bit, everybody. My goodness. So we have uh, ourselves finding, uh, we're halfway through Advent already. It goes pretty quick. Christmas is right around the corner. If you don't have your presents purchased, you better get on that. Let me tell you what. Well, here we are, second week of Advent. And uh, it's such a it's such a it's such an interesting season, you know. For the last couple of weeks of ordinary time, we're talking about the end times. We're talking about judgment. We're talking about the lambs and the goats, the left and the right. And then we're in Advent. We're you know feeling that kind of festive spirit. And last week, we continue to talk about God coming back. And here we get this odd character, John the Baptist. Jesus' cousin, this guy who's out there telling everybody about Jesus. And he's in camel hair. He's eating locusts and honey. Now, what is this all about? All these readings, it talks about him. In Isaiah, hundreds of years before, they're talking about the voice from the desert or the wilderness. And as that began today, as we had the Gospel of Mark, but this voice in the desert, many of the translations, wilderness. What is that image that, that comes up? And for us, it's hard to imagine really what a barren wasteland looks like for many. I've never really ever been to a desert. I spent one day at the Dead Sea in the Holy Land, but other than that, I've never been in a desert. So I just kind of think wilderness, you know, bare, bare grills. The woods, like a peaceful experience to go sit in the woods and watch the squirrels run around. It's not that bad. But if you're living in a desert, you realize there's not a lot of life there. There's not a lot going, going for it. 
especially in the Middle East. There's some really difficult areas. And the idea of, of living in this desert, in this barren wasteland, it's kind of crazy. You, you don't just do it. You, why, would you, why, whoa, why would you go out there? You got to eat bugs to survive because there's nothing to eat. It's crazy. So this is really radical for John the Baptist to go out into the wasteland and to be by himself. And for many people you know, around Galilee, they would have heard about this guy. Like, That's the crazy John. He's out in the desert. What is he doing out there? And for us, we don't have really a way to, to relate to that. But what was he doing? He was, yes, fulfilling Isaiah and the scriptures, being the one foretold to lay the path before Christ's return. But John, he was getting away from, from all the distractions. He was getting away from all of the things and the people who had kind of been relaxing and just taking it easy. And this was his way of preparing spiritually, emotionally, physically for our Lord to come. We need to be ready. So how can we relate to that in our life? What would be a wasteland that just makes no sense? So I was praying about this the other day. The desert of our life. What would be something that you could step away from and it would just be like, well, why would you do that? And in a big way, I think it's technology. And now we're so addicted, we're so tied to the internet and our phones and our TVs and our games and all of these devices. If someone were to tell you, you know, I don't have a TV in my house, well, that's kind of odd. I don't have a computer. Well, how do you find out things? I, I, don't, I don't even have a smartphone. Why? Why would you do that? That's a desert. A desert of lack of information and being connected and so much entertainment. Why, why would you do that? But it makes total sense. It's just like John stepping out in the desert and saying, guys, something is going on. Now, last week it was like, we need to wake up. We need to realize. And this is a continuation of that. So brothers and sisters, it's time to spend a little time thinking, going into our own little desert, spending that time in silence, taking a step away from media. And what happens is all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit begins to work on our hearts. And there's one very clear message that comes from this. It's like, I need to get my stuff together. I need to make straight the path. I realize that there's some things in my heart that are not of God, it's not building up anyone around me, and it's not making me happy. This is, uh, maybe you want to call it Catholic guilt, but it's more recognizing that there's a better way. That our Lord has something more in each of our lives that quite simply we just need to have the humility to repent and to surrender. So let's spend a little bit of time. Let's ask the Lord to show us what ways we need to turn. What perversions in our heart does the Holy Spirit need to take care of? And we do that, again, by stepping away and acknowledging that. But then we go to confession. We go to confession not to be yelled at, not to be kicked down, but to be lifted up. Recognizing that every time we have the opportunity to receive mercy, the Lord gives it freely, lovingly, and infinitely. So brothers and sisters, we've had a lot of, a lot of time in, the, in this parish where we've talked about confession, but this is, this is the week as well. I want you all to think about it. We have some extra times coming up to go to confession. We're even going to have a parish mission, you know, going on the next couple days. I'll, I'll mention in the announcement, but all three of us will be here in confessions. All three of us priests. And that side of, type of commitment that we make 
is because we love you and we want to tell you this is important. This is going to allow you to live a better life, to have these burdens lifted from your shoulders. So as we quickly progress through Advent, brothers and sisters, we step into the wilderness, we step into the desert, we allow the distractions to calm down, listen to the Holy Spirit, and let him lift you up. Let him bring you closer to Christ as he's so close to coming into our hearts and coming into our lives in the beautiful day of Christmas. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Heavenly Father, we know you to be a loving and merciful God. With this confidence, we turn to you in prayer. The Holy Church may reveal the glory of the Lord for all people to see. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That Christian leaders may work for justice and peace based on divine mercy. Let us pray to the Lord that those who are dying may be prepared to meet Christ in a state of penitence and peace. Let us pray to the Lord that others may see the patience of God in the way we treat them. Let us pray for the Lord that those whose deaths we recall may enjoy light, pardon, and peace, especially James Felker, for whom we offer this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord all these things through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice into your hands. Praise and glory of his name, but in the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day, may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing he gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me Mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, proclaim your 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Patrick, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. Oh, 
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The announcements. Uh, tonight and tomorrow, we're going to have our, our parish mission uh, by Father Ryan Adorjan. He's an awesome priest, and we're very uh, blessed to be able to have him uh, be here. He was my classmate in ordination for several years uh, before I did a pastoral year, so he got ordained a year earlier than I, but I've known him for many years. He is a real down-to-earth uh, guy, one of the funniest people I've ever had the pleasure of meeting, so you're going to learn a lot about Christ, and uh, you're going to have a great time, too. He's an awesome guy. So you've got a few different options. It starts with Mass tonight. You, you know, you guys already did that, so, you know, good job. But if you want to go to five, you could. We're also going to be live streaming. Uh, so like his homily, you could, you could go watch it uh, at, at another time. But then right after Mass, like six o'clock, he's going to give another talk, and uh, it'll lead right into uh, adoration. And then as I said... All three of us priests will be hearing confession. And then again, tomorrow night, um, there'll be a, a, a mass for the vigil of Immaculate Conception and then another, another uh, parish mission. So I encourage you all to do that. And big news here, everybody pay attention. Our youth ministry is getting, getting going. It's very exciting. We've got Lauren and Kylie doing a lot of awesome work and it's been so much fun to see the Holy Spirit kind of stir in them and all your prayers uh, is really helping that, but they're looking, looking to put a little team together, right? So the youth ministry is looking for 22 adult leaders to walk alongside our 6th to 8th grade students this upcoming year. So whether you're 72 or 23, if you love the Lord and are willing to love young people, they'd love to talk with you about being part of their team. Their goal is to build up the community of adults who are committed to serving and loving our middle and high school students. Uh, Lauren or Kylie will be in the Narthex after Mass today, and you can talk to them. And again, guys, this is a huge opportunity that I'm telling you to seriously consider. Um, it's going to change your life if you do this. It'll be a commitment, but it's going to change your life. The Holy Spirit will build you up in a way that um, we, don't, we don't even quite understand. You know, last Saturday, I had the great honor of being the priest to marry my sister to her, her lovely husband. They've been married now a week. And, uh, you know, I love my sister very much. But it was a huge stepping turn in her life when at St. Bridget's, Lauren was there with Nick Frank and Monsignor. She joined this team, changed her life. She's already awesome. She was already faith-filled. But this totally, the Holy Spirit um, really helped her become now the woman that she is today and the mother that she'll hopefully soon be. So this is a life-changing opportunity, not only for you, but for the youth of our parish who are in such a need of spiritual fathers and mothers in their lives, which this is the opportunity to do. So seriously, the Lord is putting this on your heart. Talk to uh, Lauren or Kylie, who's ever out in the narthex. And also with that, next summer we've got summer camp, June 8th to the 11th. All current 6th and 8th graders are welcome to attend. High school students are invited to come and serve as camp counselors. Further information and forms can be picked up at the parish office. Um, so feel free to talk to them as well about that. It's going to be a great time. And lastly, in blue of breakfast, breakfast with Santa this year, the Knights of Columbus ask you to visit Santa and his elves through their Keep Christ in Christmas socially distanced event featuring a virtual poster contest on December 13th after the 8th and 9.30 Masses. There'll be a drive-by, you guys missed those, with Santa to receive your posters, see the bulletin for details. Hey, thank you for your patience. I'm sure many of you would rather have somewhere to be, but offer it up. A couple of minutes. You can deal with it. All right? I love you guys. It's great to start the day with you. Um, I'm jazzed up. I can't tell if you can tell that, but I just was on retreat all week, and it's great to be back with you guys. I really love you. Have a great Sunday and a terrific week, and go to confession. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.